Greetings! I am Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. Today we're going to continue our talk about Pathfinder, and we're going to get into a lot of this interesting, descriptive information about your character. That's the next section to talk about. But we start with this, with alignments. That's where we're going to start our discussion. So what are the alignments? The alignments are nine sort of moral compasses. That's a good way of thinking it. It splits between good and evil, and law and chaos. Law on this side, chaos on this side, good on this side, evil on this side. So it's this grid of nine, a basically tic-tac-toe board of alignments with neutral for both of them in the middle. So what do these mean? If you're lawful good, it means you're a very good person, you follow the law, you're like a, a paladin would be lawful good. Neutral good would be you doing good things usually for the sake of being good. You're generally just a good person. Chaotic good is you want to do the right thing, but you also believe in freedom. You don't, like, pertain to laws if it doesn't help you. Like, a very Robin Hood kind of person would be chaotic good. Now, lawful neutral would be you just obey the law. You stick within the law, you stick within the order. You don't really care if it's good or bad. True neutral is you don't care. You either don't care or you subscribe to balance in everything. Those are the two sort of ideas to it. Chaotic neutral is you're out for yourself. You're, you're very selfish, usually. You're all about, like, just doing whatever you want, and it doesn't, as long as it doesn't really be bad or good or it sort of balances it out. Lawful evil is very politician, like a bad politician, bureaucrat. There are people that make deals to do dark things. They stay within the sort of order, but they're always out for, the, for themselves. Neutral evil is evil for the sake of evil. You're doing bad things just because you like doing bad things. And chaotic evil is destruction and chaos. That's all you live for. It's what you try to do. You revel in it. Now, these alignments are not necessarily how you're going to act. They're a template, an idea of where you're sort of coming from. You choose your character to be in alignment. Of course, you can change your alignment depending on your actions in the game, but these are the kind of, like, you have to think about when you're think deciding some of your character's actions in a circumstance, you have to say to yourself, would this fit within the idea that my character would do? If you're a lawful good, for whatever reason, you have to say to yourself, would I do this action because of how I think myself? How my character thinks because I'm lawful good? Do I, am I very judicious in the way I'm acting? Or am I a little lax? Anyway, after alignment, we talk about some of the more derived values on your character. These character, this is a little bits of information which help define your character a little more, though they are themselves not critically important. It's like choosing the sex of your character. The sex of your character is important for your character, not for the numbers on the sheet. These are age. They have random starting ages here. They tell you what kind of age you should be in range for a first level character of a class. Now granted, you could be older, you theoretically could be younger with your game master's permission, but it would be basically that you needed this much time from when you were an adult to learn to become this class. Now these are for all the different races. It will tell you what they are per race. They also do the same for height and weight. They will tell you a sort of the normal range of height and weight for your race, for your gender and race. Now they do list some other information in this section here. They tell you maximum age. There are certain points where you gain an age category, where you become middle-aged, old, or venerable. And they also give maximum de uh, ages, which is when you would die from old age for your character. You can actually roll that ahead of time if it really would come up in game, but most of the time it doesn't. And this again goes by race. Now what do the age categories mean? Because sometimes you can get your game master's permission to start at an older age. Middle age means you minus one to all your physicals, add one to all your mentals. Old means minus two to all your physicals, plus one to all your mentals. Venerable means minus three to all your physicals, plus one to all your mentals. These numbers are cumulative, meaning, oh, I got minus one here, it increases to minus three, it increases to minus six. So when you are venerable, you have minus six to all three of your physicals, strength, dexterity, and constitution, while all your mentals only gain plus three. Sometimes it might be good to play the really old wizard. Maybe you went through life not doing anything, you were just sort of a commoner, and now you finally became a wizard in your older age. You could play that kind of character. You're, you're physically feebly weak, but you'd have pretty great mental scores in your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, for doing that sort of thing, for your spell casting, really. That's the only reason to take it most of the time, is for spell casting. The disadvantages are pretty hefty. Now, there is also listed in here carrying capacity. This is used sparingly. 
for a lot of my games, I use it if my characters are being ridiculous. If I want to carry, like, if I say as my character I'm going to carry 20 tons of things, my DM might say, carrying capacity, how much can you carry? While if I just have a normal sort of equipment, he's probably not going to say much. It's You have to sort of balance out using it and not abusing it, because it can get very numbers laden using carry capacity. It's based on your strength. So however much strength you have is telling you how much you can carry. Now there's a light, medium, and heavy load. You have to think of it similar to light, medium, heavy armor. The more heavier it gets, the more problems it has for your character. It gives you armor check penalty. It slows you down. It acts just like if you were wearing light, medium, or heavy armor. It works just the same. The numbers are a little bit different. They give you in the book like how much you would have to various things when carrying these loads, but you just have to think of it that you want to stay to a light load most of the time. So they talk about a few more things in this section of the book that I'm kind of going over. They talk about tactical movement, light, and attacking objects. Let's talk about these. Movement, really. There's different types of movement. A walk, a hustle, and a run. Now they talk about doing a tactical movement, which is per round, how much you can run, do each of these things. Um, local, which is per minute, which is saying like if I'm judging how much I'm walking, hustling, or running around a village, I might do it per minute. And then there's also Overland. Overland is by hour or by day. Now, when you get into Overland, it limits the amount of time you can do things. It's also on the local level, you can only run for so long. Tactically, you can usually run for a little while. You don't have to worry about it. Locally, it could come up, but you can just, you can just keep running for a, lunch, come to a couple of local rounds or minutes. While Overland, you can only hustle for so long, you can probably only run for so long, it might not come up. You probably aren't going to run a full hour. You're probably not going to hustle an entire day. Now it does list other forms of transportation, how fast they go, how far they can go in a day for certain types of these travels. Now for illumination, this is also a very important one. There's characters that have normal vision, characters that have low light vision, and characters that have dark vision. For those of you that have normal vision, illumination is very important. There are four levels of it. Bright light, that's like standing out in the middle of sunlight. Normal light, it's in a building with decent lighting. Dim light, that would be like a candle's over in the corner. You can sort of see you're far away from it. And darkness, you can't really see everything. It gives the basic rules for when you're in this type of lighting. And it also gives a lot of different things that are light sources and tells you how far they illuminate and how much they illuminate. And the last thing they talk about is attacking objects because you can attack creatures, but you can also attack things. You can attack a door, you can attack a wall, you can attack a chest if you want to break it open because you can't pick the lock. All objects are very easy to hit, but they have hardness and hit points. Hardness means I just take less damage. That's it. When something has a hardness, it means it absorbs a certain amount of damage. Something like wood only has a little bit of a hardness, while something like stone or iron has a lot of it, meaning I have to do a lot of damage to chip into it. Now there are other special rules for breaking objects depending on different things. Things like energy attacks might, may or may not ignore hardness. It might add extra hardness. They talk about this a little bit in the book. The other thing is, there are things like doors and walls. You can also just use brute strength to break open. It will give a strength break DC, meaning I have to roll on a d20 a certain number. Oftentimes these are very high. Some of them can be even above 20, meaning that they're nearly impossible to just use brute strength to break open. Alright, so that's all I wanted to talk about today. I went over the alignments, some of the basic information that's going to be on your character to help define your actual character, and a little bit of information to help you understand the world, moving around it, attacking things to a degree, and seeing. So if you have any questions or comments about this episode, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It shows your support. Please subscribe if you already haven't. It's another way of showing your support, and we always are looking for more citizens of the Empire. Please share this video if you know anybody that could learn something from it or would enjoy this video. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.